Okay. Many, 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 many videos ago, I was trying to get an air conditioning setup completed on my common swap Ford, which I'm about to show you. The way I was doing this, I was actually in the middle of kind of learning how to weld with a horrible welder. <laughs> yeah, anyways, um, I'm going to be getting rid of this because we're going to be doing something different. So I'm going to get these bolts and stuff off of here and get that out of here and let's be back to a bare compressor. Uh, my hope is to get this mounted on the truck in such a way that I can um, not spend $500 on a, p on a bracket just to mount this and then to have to buy another $150 to $200 alternator. Um, my alternator right now is working just fine and it's been like that for years and I don't want to replace it just yet because it's I'd, I'd rather wait till it goes out. So it's not going to get upgraded yet. Right now I just want to get this mounted solidly and reliably for as cheap as possible. Now, I might have to buy, I need a drill press. I'm gonna be getting a drill press soon um, because we'll need one for this. But for right now, um, we're gonna just do some mock-up, make some mock-up pieces or a mock-up mount out of wood just to kind of get an idea how to mount this thing. And then we can transfer that stuff over to metal and make our metal brackets that way. Get all this off of here. Now, if I remember right, these bolts were way too long. I think I just had them. Okay, now that does it. Yeah, this is an FS10 AC compressor for a Super Duty. And, uh, Those are a tight fit. So, plan of attack. Uh, the truck already has, I've already got it set up with a wiring harness to plug into here. And then everything else in the truck is new. It's got a new evaporator core, AC condenser, new accumulator. I think it even has a new orifice tube. And then, what else did I do? I think that's about it. The only thing I have to do is reseal the box. I didn't put new gasket stuff on so that Airflow is not as good as it used to be, so I have to fix that. This guy just needs a manifold. Now I found on Summit Racing you can buy a manifold that will uh, bolt up into here and it has a number 8 and a number 10. park this truck in the garage and shut that door the problem is is that I have to crawl under the truck <laughs> to shut the door and then I gotta crawl back into it well five minutes later and some mechanics wire and we got ourselves an overhead light be nice to have one of those LED bar things that have magnets on it you can just stick it on the hood but hey you know what uh, this thing I got it from a guy across the street for free and both lights work and then I've got that working so Works for me in the wire I had laying around. 
looks like from one of those um, uh, boundary kits for like um, dog training or or if you have a big property. So I think we can see pretty good in video past videos. You guys have not been able to see jack diddly squat and now today that has changed you can actually see what i'm doing i'm thinking this is what i'm seeing so far this air cleaner assembly nonsense i've got going on is going to get um, i'm going to change that because I, I just don't like how it is and it's it's not right however when i go to move my alternator down towards the firewall there it'll actually get it away from that air cleaner a little bit more so a little more room but I'm gonna have my compressor is gonna be right here so this actually needs to get pushed down probably relocate this this runs my power brakes and eventually I'm gonna do away with it and go to um, what the Dodge 12 valves run um, but for right now I haven't been having any problems with this and I just don't feel like removing it quite yet um, so let's get this intake out of here I gotta clean this filter anyways if I've got room, I might rerun this upper radiator hose. I might actually take this fitting, put it down here, and take this put it here. They're both on the hot side of the of the cooling system, so that's what that's all I need. Maybe put an elbow on that, have it go back and then around. And then it'd be nice if I had the water outlet that came out this way. I don't think you can rotate this. No, it's it does one way. Cause I could have it come out this way and straight across, and that would give me more room for an intake. Um, the plan is to eventually move it over here, get rid of this big canister, and put an Explorer vacuum canister over here, and then be good to go. Okay, let's uh, let me start dismantling this. I have these zip ties here. This just keeps it from walking around someone commented on my last video about the e-brake thing and it's like first gear is e-brake I go yeah you know what that doesn't really work you have an e-brake for a reason Especially if it's an automatic and you're, it doesn't go to park for some reason. I've had that happen. <clears throat> With this Explorer that I have, well now it's a manual, but... But it's a safety thing. And there are times where you need the vehicle to be running to either warm up or you're warming up before heading out somewhere, you're loading something up, um, or let's say you're trying to winch somebody out and you need it to be running to keep the batteries charged, you've got to have that e-brake wor e working to help anchor it down a little bit, you know. Or even if you're in a situation where uh, the vehicle has to stay running and let's say you're on a road where a tree fell down and you need your vehicle to, it's the winter time, you need it to stay running to keep the heat going in the cab while you cut down a tree. You've got to have that e-brake e -brake working. So, Anyways, a wild tangent for this video. While we're in here, I'm going to have to move you guys a little bit. I want to check my turbo while I got my intake off. See if we need to upgrade this thing. Even though, technically, it's already, it's already an upgrade over what I had before. Got a little bit, but a little bit of play, but man, yeah, she's still... Uh, Still good. Looks fairly clean for the most part. I haven't had that part open up opened up in a while. Another thing I might do while I'm in here. See my alternator wiring there. That pigtail is a little sketchy. And I have. Where'd she go? What did I do with it, Jimmy? Got a new plug here. But nice. Fresh wiring, nice solid plug. It was like eight bucks in. Mm. Napa derp. 
Um, kind of nice to take a little bit of coolant out and actually get this upper radiator hose out of the way so I can work with stuff. But I think I got enough room there where that's not going to be a problem. I think I can leave the alternator hooked up. The only thing I have to take off is the belt. So get the belt off. And then I can just undo this bracket here. Actually, I might just take this off anyways. Because, well, we're going to need this. I'm going to use this as a template to make the whole pattern for the bracket itself that's going to mount the compressor. Yeah. I was actually looking at this project online. It was on 4BTSwaps.com. And what this guy did, and this is where I get my idea from, he made a plate out of steel that mounts onto this thermostat housing. And he pushed his alternator down this way. And then he mounted the same compressor that I had, or a similar one. I think he had a slightly different Ford compressor, but it was still an 8 rib one. But same idea, it was a four pad, alt, four pad four alternator, uh, Ford alternator. And so he had this plate and then two blocks that uh, got spaced out on the plate. And then what it did is it made it so he could put a mount his uh, AC compressor right on there. And then he made a bracket kind of like this, but a little bit simpler, um, smaller. And that bolted. Uh, this part of the alternator to the AC compressor. And it's time for a front cover gasket and I got a split open gasket here. Whoopsie! Okay, so we'll get this undone. I think I'm getting there with my uh, my electric gun and zip that off. Get the alternator moved over and we can zip these 8mm uh, bolts out of here. I think I might take my alternator out completely. I don't have the bottom part very tight. So it should sit. So it should sit something like this. This is what I saw on, I think it was 4BTSwaps.com. Something like this. Might try and reclock this alternator. Because my post is getting ready to hit the fuel, uh, the oil filter. So it's the AC compressor is going to sit right here. So I might have this sit like up here and it'll be off the... Yeah, I've got plenty of room there. Okay, let's get this bracket off of here. And then um, see about making a... Uh, wood square and then we'll use this to map out our uh, bolt pattern and because we're doing some alternator stuff where I'm actually going to disconnect my battery so that way we don't have any problems technically you should do that anytime you work on something especially if, you're, if there's a little bit of electrical involved those aren't 8 mil, those are 10. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. That's a pretty good surface area for a steel plate set on that. Should, should be nice and solid. It's going to work just fine. So what I might actually do is I'll cut out a square for this and then I'll cut out a square for this and then I'll probably take some 2x4 scraps and 
see if those are I think those will be good enough to make the spacer on this I'm gonna think about this one and maybe cut up some material and test fit it and see how I like it and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do now the other thing I'm gonna have to do is this clamp I got right here I'm gonna have to move it over just make it a six Actually, that's a, I'm measuring it from the one here. I'll make it a five. Five by six. Voila! For a jigsaw and grinder, not too bad. I did a lot of grinding on it. This seems to be a good spot for the compressor as far as alignment goes. It seems like if this uh, boss right here is just past this bolt here, it puts this in a really good spot for alignment. And it's a little off, that's why. I mean, it looks pretty even with the engine, so that's good. That's kind of funny looking. And it clears the cooler back here, so that's how we have to make it. You know what, this needs to come up higher. Damn it, Bobby. So now I'm getting the general idea of a, of a plate now. So what I could have done, if I would have realized that I had this down too far, I would have just not ground this off, but it left me with a lot more meat, I could have made my other hole. So maybe I'll make another one of these and make it so I can bolt these down. Now, when you're doing this, remember that they're um, one pattern's wider than the other. So this one is actually, yeah, this one up here is wider. Um, so that's why I have this slot here because I had it flipped. So now I've got it in the right direction. And I know it looks a little crude, but this is called uh, prototyping or engineering. So now this is the connector here. It's going to go towards the HVAC box, which I have my wire somewhere here. I think, uh, let's see, is it right here? Ah, oh, it is right here. Come here. And it's just the perfect length, too. I think I actually made it to use on this setup because it won't reach over here. So I originally made it to use it over here anyway. So this will just snake through and then plug in. And I gotta get a new valve for that because I stole it to use on the Explorer. So that'll plug in here to the pressure thing. This will go over here. And then, uh, Bob's your auntie. So now what I'm figuring out, since I have the plate made and I know that's gonna work, I'm just figuring out um, spacing. So I think what I'm going to do is actually just cut a couple of like four strips out of this and then uh, two of those will give me an inch spacing but I really only need about a half inch so I think I might try and cut one strip drill some holes through it get it to fit in here and then see how that spacing is because we're trying to clear you see how the wood's got a bend, a bit of a bend into it? It's got a little bit of a bend. Well, we want to clear this body, so we space it out a little bit, about a half inch. It should also give us room for the mounting bolts that um, hold this to the engine. Yeah, so I'm gonna think about things, cut some stuff up. I'm gonna, oh, one beer in, I'm gonna have to get another. Think about things, cut some things, and um, draw some holes. And then I'll update you on where I'm at with that. Now I know these bolts are really long. I'm gonna get shorter bolts for this, but it's what I have right now. Okay, 
Okay, so that's one problem we're going to run into right there. So we just need to make it so that the bracket has some adjustment. I could probably do that. Yeah, so it needs to come over basically a, a one ribs worth. So when this belt's coming down this way, and when it hits the tensioner, it hits the drive for the fan, and it wants to kick it off one rib. So I think if we had a made some adjustment in our main bracket there so we can move it back and forth we should be able to bring this forward a little bit and not have it walk the belt and then the alternator it's mounted to a flat piece of bar at the bottom and it's mounted to a flat piece on the engine so if those two were tight that would put the alternator in alignment and then we can make that bracket there adjustable and then after doing that, we can get that aligned. So I think my height, basically if you look at it as a tire, the camber angle is like dead straight. We just need to come forward a tiny bit, offset it just a teeny weeny bit, and then we should be good to go. Yeah, just you can just look at it. Would you just look at it? I'm looking straight at the comp compressor. And then come down. And then when you spin that, it's nice that I'm able to do that because I can tell if the belt's straight or not. Because you don't want it kicking belts or eating, eating belts. Almost wondering if we could reuse this. Just put this here. I just don't want it to look stupid, too stupid, you know. And then we'll have to, I'll have to do something different about my air filter. I'm probably going to have, you know what, I'll just take this and I'll mount them onto this bracket here and then get this out of the way and then I'll have a straight shot for an air filter. So, and then I can get the big round paper one. I think I'll do that. That's promising, that's promising. Very, 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 very promising and I like it. So that means I'm not up high enough just yet. So if I'm, yeah, I'm not. She needs to come in. Do something like that. That looks better. So she needs to be up, forward, and over. So let's get an idea of kind of how that looks even though I just let go of it. So that's how it was tracking when I had it up and up, out, and over. So that looks a lot better. It still needs to come over a tiny bit, but it's because I let go of it. But it's like up and over. Yeah. Okay, it's lunch time. So, uh. <laughs> I told, all I gotta do right There's now. a drill, there's a vice, there's some washers, and a cracked. And my drill. advice for him was to not do it with that one. <laughs> advice, sure enough. Vice. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> it was a pun on words, it was uh. a mistake.
Uh, well, uh, you know, I'm not even that drunk. Well, things went fine, I'll tell you what, because this was like... <laughs> Well, tubers, I think we're gonna call that a night. For right now, the wood template is giving me an idea of where this is gonna sit and where it, how it needs to align. But because it's wood, it's not very accurate. So this thing is actually wanting to, uh, it's wanting to pull that way, just because of how it's bolted down. So, <clears throat> um, for the most part, I got the height set up and I figure when I make my actual bracket to bolt on here I'm gonna leave one bolt loose or, or uh, one bolt hole is gonna be the same size as the bolt so it'll be very it'll be close enough to precise it'll be spot on and what that'll do or and then leaving the rest of the bolt hole sloppy what that'll do is it'll give me up and down adjustment so I can fine-tune it but for the most part as long as the piece of steel here is is flat and is is true to this housing here um, it should it should be good because I look on this bracket and it bolts up flat to that piece and it's not angled or anything funny and that used to hold on to that which is supposed to keep that true because you have to have the serpentine running true or else it's gonna walk off of one of the pulleys and right now I got it to where it'll stop walking it's not perfect but if it came over a little bit more, we could get this belt to right here. So right now it's wanting to walk off. Hmm. Or it may just be, well, the, the wood is not, it's just only good for a template, that's about it. Otherwise, once we make the actual bracket, we'll be able to pull this in and we'll be good to go. But yeah, it's, I don't know if you can tell. Got that bracket in it's hard, hard to, hard to see. But it's coming out this way towards, towards the house. And if I if I push on it, and I know the alternator's kind of walking around too, but yeah, see this how this flexes. That's kind of giving me my general idea. So what I think I might do is actually countersink these holes, so they don't have to run a big space or just enough to clear it off the bracket so I'm gonna put this back together the way it was and then uh, call her a day I'm um, we'll probably go to the steel yard and get some some materials and then I'm probably I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go buy a drill press so I can draw out my holes and countersink everything so that, that'll be a new tool we're gonna go at um, acquire. So I gotta get a front cover gasket for this thing. It's just gooey. Over here, it's all blown out. Oh shit! I just noticed that. I'm like, no wonder I'm losing oil. No. But it doesn't leak. Under pressure. <laughs> but it doesn't leak. I'm like, let's see. There's like one it's, drop. She's clammy in there. She's a little, little. Mud. All I smell is just mud. Cause I went off road. Alright dude, we gotta go. The alcohol's getting to us. Mm -hmm.